Is this Vermont or heaven? It's Vlogmas year 11. Good morning, Vlogmas day 12. Oh my God, I could not talk to you today until I had my food in my system. I've just been feeling pretty weird and I need to go to the grocery store. I know I've been talking about this since literally Sunday and it's Tuesday, so we're gonna do that today. But I wanna shower before I go, just so I don't have to do it tomorrow before my endocrinology appointment and just cause I need it, honey. I mean, look at me, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I spent the morning just uploading all of the footage from our sex reveal of our baby for you guys so I've just been kind of like lounging in bed reading through your comments and your excitement and just making sure that it's like posted on all platforms because when I announced the baby I literally forgot to put it on TikTok for like at least four hours <laughs> and um, you know it's just nice to like put those things up and people can find them on the platform that they use the most and then move on with their days so I put up the vlogmas and then I put up the TikTok downloaded that TikTok got the watermark off of it and put it on Instagram reels because that's really my 411 because either way I feel like a lot of people use Instagram just like throughout the day but it is nice to just get stuff up on TikTok early anyway y'all don't care about this probably I slept okay last night I was really sweaty for some reason like dripping sweat when I woke up to go to the bathroom I'm just like what's happening I don't know why I'm sweating so much in my sleep so that's also a reason to uh, take a shower <laughs> and I need to do some laundry as well today and I need to go to the hardware store for Finley he's been working on the garage door downstairs all morning like since before I woke up but I'm gonna make my grocery list and then pop in the shower and head the hell out of here all right love you guys okay I just got out of the shower and brushed and braided my hair this is surprisingly like the number one way that I try to get my hair detangled or prevent it from tangling I guess I should say the only way I can actually detangle my hair is with a damn paddle brush ripping and ripping and ripping and it's terrible. So I did like a like a leave-in conditioner, like hair mask in the shower today because I honestly, I feel like since I've gotten pregnant, my hair has been more tangly and I'm like, why? It maybe it's just cause it's winter and I'm like wearing more beanies or I don't know. Anyway, my turtleneck is all fucked up. But one of my patrons actually messaged me saying that they wanted to get bangs and they were wondering how I've been liking them. And granted, I've had a fringe of sorts like this since 2016 off and on. And so I've always really enjoyed having them. And normally what I do, cause my hair is like pretty easy to manage. Like I could actually let them air dry today like this because I took them out of my little, I guess some people call them a turby twist. <laughs> is that what they're called? I don't know, those little hair towels. Mine's not from that brand, but it's just like a little hair towel and I had it in there drying and then I, yeah, brushed and braided the bottoms and then I just have my little mini hair dryer. I use the method where I just brush back and forth like this with the hair dryer, which you'll see, but I don't use a round brush and I used to use a round brush to dry my bangs, but I don't have one anymore. And my hairdresser said that this way is actually like easier to manage so you don't get like a big snooky poof. Yeah! It literally takes like less than a minute. <laughs> They're dry and ready to go. And my hair is pretty thick, so slay. Anyway. Where are my glasses? Do you have my glasses? Oh my God, you guys stole my glasses. Why would you steal my glasses from me? Give them back. Jesus. Well, brothers, I gotta go out on the town. Hello folks, I'm in downtown Brattleboro when school let out and it's popping around here. I'm gonna do a couple of things while I'm here. I'm gonna run across the street to the post office. I'm also gonna go back here to the Ace Hardware and get some stuff that's behind the counter for us. And then I'm gonna go grocery shop and then I'm gonna go to the country store on the way home. So I have a handful of things to do and I think that's it. I didn't vlog before I left the house like telling you what I was doing because I just figured I would when I got here and I was on the phone. I love catching up with somebody on the drive here. It makes it go whoosh, so fast. So I have my things and I'm gonna go do them now. And it looks like somebody already paid my meter for me. Love that, this is my luck. Oh, this actually happened to me when I went to the bakery the other day. I parked at a meter and it had an hour on it. I was like, oh my God, this is great. Now I can go shopping. Love when people pay it forward. Maybe I'll pay it forward for somebody else. That's a good idea. Here I come, Ace. I got what I needed and I'm admiring the church. I love that church. Now we're going to the post office. This clock. 
bright as hell outside right now. I'm trying to shield myself from the sun. But um, I'm going to go shop at the co-op and get a couple of things. I want to get some cookie ingredients just preemptively so that I can make molasses cookies first thing when our oven starts working. I got one final piece for the oven. And the garage door is working. Total thrill. Which I don't think Finley has showed you guys yet. He said he was going to take my camera and do it and then I think he left it in another room because I found my camera in a room and was like, I don't think he actually took this anywhere. Maybe I can get him to update you when I go back home. But I know I look weird just shielding myself from the sun right now, so sorry, but whatever. Um, I also wanted to say that when I parked my car, and this happens every time I come to really anywhere in Vermont and park my car and somebody passes by and reads my plates. Like when we went to the Christmas parade, somebody was looking at our plates when we were inside of the car and I heard them just go, oh, Oregon. They always call it Oregon gone and like the pentagon or something like that so funny and then when i just parked now i was like checking the meter to make sure that there was a lot of time on it and there was it was almost an hour and this guy passed by me and he goes oregon where were you and i was like i was in a small town called colton and he told me he was like right across the california border so we were definitely not close to each other but it was fun to talk to him he was like beautiful place beautiful just beautiful spent a lot of time out there and i was like us too almost five years but happy to be here now. Anyway, it's time to go shopping. Okay, the co-op was very busy, but a success. And I'm about to try this mango lassi. It's a low fat yogurt smoothie and it's just mango puree in yogurt. So I figured, hell, why not? Yeah! That's good. Guys, the co-op when we were like checking out and stuff the lines were just insane and there's this person who works there and i've seen them before they're kind of older and they are so silly and when i was looking at my phone uh because i was like texting finley in line being like i got you a couple surprises because i did i found some really good surprises and i didn't film in my cart because i actually felt more comfortable doing that in oregon just because the grocery stores i went to were so big compared to here at the co-op if i put you in my cart and i film the corners that i turn are so tight sometimes I don't want people to like look in the cart and think that I'm filming them you know what I mean so I just didn't do that today but I will do a grocery haul when I get home because I haven't been doing those for a very long time mostly because I was trying to hide my pregnancy and there wasn't a lot that I could eat and I was just eating like the same boring things being like got more crackers got more canned soup you know it's like okay but um now I have a little bit more variety in there and I'm gonna try out some new things as well and hopefully they're good but anyway back to my story I was in the line waiting to check out and I was looking at my phone texting Finley about the surprises and the person goes no playing Pokemon Go in the line and I was like oh I'm not and they go is that joke outdated I can't tell if anybody's out there catching Pokemon anymore and I was like honestly my husband is <laughs> he loves Pokemon and you can't really play Pokemon Go like in small rural places but in cities you can still play it anyway that really sparked a conversation between me and this person when we were checking out and I noticed that they were doing an entire stand-up routine for the checkout stuff like they would hold up the cheese and be like don't cut the cheese well, I don't know which way you cut it, but just don't cut it near me. They also at one point moved up like all of my stuff to make room for the person behind me because it was really busy. And they put like that little barricade down and go, feel free to unload. Oh, hey, not that kind of unloading just your groceries, I mean. And I was like, oh my God. And so at the end of um, when I was checking out, I told them, I loved your stand-up routine personally. Like that was really great. I loved all the jokes. So made me happy. Okay, let's go to the country store and then home. Hiya folks, I'm at my country store and I just got an English cottage pie for Finley. And while I was out, I got spray bottles to check for leaks on the line before we turn on the oven, just to make sure that it was like properly installed and stuff and I don't know where the hell we have spray bottles so I just got some of those at the hardware store that was like the last piece we needed and then Finley also needed this hole saw for the door as well and then I'll show you all the other groceries and things when I get back home but for some reason I just have been thinking about this and I wanted to say so I know for my POC viewers you guys ask this a lot and um, one of my friends actually asked me this before I moved because she's black and she was wondering like are there any black people in Vermont and I was like honestly there's a few 
but there was even less in Oregon. And this has just been on my mind today to talk about because today I've seen way more POC out on the town. So I was just like, hmm, I for some reason want to talk about this just because um, the main difference that I have seen and experienced so far from moving from Oregon to Vermont, well, you know, I was in Virginia before this and Virginia is super diverse. A lot of immigrants in Virginia because they immigrate to DC or Virginia and a lot of my Zumba classes were just like filled with women from so many countries that I have never met anybody from. But in Vermont and just in general in the Northeast, it is a lot of white people, but there are some black people here. And really the main thing that I've noticed is that Vermont is just in general more inviting and accepting, whereas Oregon, they want to be so bad. <laughs> they try really hard to be accepting and inviting, but there are still a lot, a lot of people who are not inviting in Oregon. And in particular, where we used to live in kind of the rural boonies outside of Portland, it was like a big divide of red and blue, if you will. Not to make it political, but it was. So, you know, Portland is like a liberal bubble and then kind of in a lot of the outskirts it's still pretty red. And that changes year to year, of course. But there was a general feeling upon moving to Vermont that like everybody's pretty safe here, you know? And I'm not going to say everybody. I'm not a black person living in Vermont, you know? So I can't like, like, don't take my word for it. But I just wanted to say that, yeah, today I've just noticed more black people out on the town. And I'm kind of like, okay, when I used to drive around Oregon, especially where I used to live, all white people all the time. Literally, if I saw one black person, I would be like, oh my God, a black person here? Which is shocking because I grew up outside of Atlanta and like my high school was at least 50% black, at least. So, you know, moving to such a white place was really shocking for me at first, especially because I was living in LA before that. And I would just notice it every single time I was out, like, God, where is the diversity? You know, and it's like historical there in Oregon as well. Like literally they did not allow black people into the state until very, very late. Like they had segregation laws in place for a very long time. So um, yeah, some of that just still runs through the state in some ways. I mean, I feel like a lot of people started like talking about the history of Oregon in that way once all of the George Floyd protests started happening and stuff. But I noticed it way before that. I was like, honey, what's going on here? You know? And yeah, obviously I don't live in a big town. You know, Brattleboro is still incredibly small. It's literally like 9,000 people or something like that which is a very small town. So for instance, Burlington is probably a little bit more diverse up north, but still probably pretty white, you know? But at least they have like a college, so people are coming from out of town and not just like the generational, you know, kind of standard white Vermonter. But Vermont is a chill place. And if you are a black viewer of mine and you want to come visit here, I would encourage you to do so because I mean, obviously it's fucking cold right now, but like in the nice seasons, especially if you're outdoorsy or you want to hike or do any of that stuff. And I have seen some like TikTok accounts where it's just the black girls going out into nature and being like, this is me hiking outside and this is the state I was in and this is like how safe I felt, you know, and stuff like that. And I did see also during our tourist season, which is like fall here in Vermont, there were these two black girls who made a TikTok counting all of the black people that they saw in every single place they went to. And it was normally like in a day they would see like five, maybe tops, you know, seven. And so obviously it's not staggering numbers like you would get in a huge city. Um, it is pretty small town out here, but definitely I do feel like um, there is a general more inviting energy in Vermont than in Oregon. And I don't know why I felt the need to say this today. <laughs> Literally nobody has asked about this. Nobody has commented about this, but um, yeah, I just thought it was kind of an interesting observation of the day. Anyway, race discussions aside, let's go home. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready for a grocery haul? It's been a while. So, Let's get after it. Finley has one of these Vita Cocos like every single day. So I got eight more of those. Then this is just one that's left over. And I also got him a Mexican cola as a little surprise because he just loves a sweetie treaty drink. 
Speaking of sweetie treaty drinks, I got myself a little thing of fresh apple cider from Champlain Orchards. I just wanted to get this small size because I got a big jug of apple cider a couple of months ago and I just never finished it. But I will have a little apple and mango. You know I love a mango moment. None of this stuff is new. Then I got some blueberries for my little granola that I have with the yogurt. I also got some Cabot sweetened light whipped cream for hot cocoa. This was by the blueberries and I said, hell, why not? I also got Finley a block of seriously sharp cabbage. Another thing of baby spinach and baby arugula because I'm probably gonna finish this later tonight. For my tortillas, I also got some refried beans. Actually, I don't think there's anything in the produce thing, but there are my little baby pouches. So I got all my favorite flavors. Strawberry banana, banana, mango, broccoli, and kale, banana, mango, and orange, and apple and peach. I got two of each. I also got a tiny thing of eggs because I don't need that many of them. And that is actually it for the fridge stuff because we're still big freezer people till this oven is up and running. So I'm a big ice cream lady and I got some more ice cream Sammies. I love these ones with the chocolate chips and the chocolate ice cream. And then Alden's actually, I showed these in a vlog, but they also released a limited edition flavor of peppermint twist little ice cream bars. So I got some of those too. And then, you know, we're just an ice cream family. So I got a local brand, which is this Mass Mocha one from Bart's. And then another local brand is this High Lawn Farm. So I got a peppermint bark flavor of that. Two boxes of the Jack and Annie's jackfruit wings, buffalo and non-buffalo. Then for Finley, I got moose trails and some maple cream ice creams, three different ones. Two of them are from Walpole Creamery and one of them is from Bart's. And then I also got him some chicken nuggets from Applegate. Naturals. I also got these Woodstock organic butternut squash raviolis to make on the stovetop when it's working again because these are really good. And then I also got some Amy's pesto tortellini because there was a discount on the Amy's. Two dollars off each box which is pretty good because Amy's is a little expensive. And normally I get myself a little baked good every time I go to the co-op and I've been leaning towards getting a lot of these black and white cookies. I get one each time I go and Finley really likes them too so I got him one as well. I also got myself some Adirondack sourdough for my avocado bread and then this shelf honestly I'm just a little bit embarrassed to show you darlings because it needs to be reorganized and it's just chaotic but the new stuff I got is these Bobo strawberry stuffed oat bites for on the go because you know I'm frog or not and I'd be snacking all the time. I also got this molasses for making my Grammy's molasses cookies. I got some refried black beans to mix with the cheese and just make like little burrito roll-ups in the microwave really quick if I'm hungry. I got some shortening for the molasses cookies as well. And then in the produce bowl over here, I got six avocados which is what I normally get of varying ripeness, and then four pears of different varieties because I want to just like bake some pears with cinnamon and cardamom and just enjoy those as a little snacky. That's my haul. My mom texted me while I was out and said, did something come in the mail? <laughs> because she told me that she was sending me an early Christmas present for me and baby peanut. And this is what it is. Velveteen Rabbit. Oh, I love this book. Then we have Truffles Christmas by Anna Curry and The Polar Express. Oh my God, I'm gonna read all of these to my belly. I'm eating my black and white cookie and I'm about to open some mail with my doggies. Gimme cookie gave you cookie, Schmidt. Gimme cookie gave you cookie. It's getting pretty intense over here in the Christmas season. I, what I just showed you is not even half of my mail. I have an entire pile next to me, mostly letters, Christmas cards. And we realized upon moving, I don't know where any of our magnets are for our fridge. So I think that we might have to like move the Christmas cards somewhere else or do something like my parents used to do, which is like get tape and tape them around a doorway or get like some kind of other display for them. I don't know. Um, let me know if you have any creative ideas down below. Okay, well now we got a little change of pace. Uh, I got the oven out here. I got it hooked up yesterday, but I uh, didn't do it right and I know I had to redo it. So I redid the connections. I just took it apart real quick. I'm gonna throw some tape on these threads right here. Uh, I didn't tape these threads because the instructions said not to for whatever reason. They, well, I know the reason they said it might end up making this cylinder crack. 
So that's untaped, but it's firmly in there. Uh, you can go too firm with brass, as anybody who saw the orifice on the upper part of this thing knows. So I try not to do that, uh, but I'll put some tape clockwise around here, and then I'll go downstairs and redo that connection with tape. Gas is off. It has been, but just showing you. It's anything like electricity, Lord knows. I need to check more than I think I do. Uh, loosen her up and twist her off. So I'm twisting in this direction, which means I want to put the tape on in this direction since that's the way I'll be twisting it on. That's the whole point is so that you're twisting with the tape. So I'll be going like this. I'm still trying to get the hang of tape. One of the reasons this is so difficult for me is because I'm really trying to avoid taping over the uh, first threads because I don't want any of this tape to sneak into the line and cause future problems. I think I got a good grip there. Now I'm just being real careful. Try to avoid that front thread. I'll do one more around. That's good. I will be testing all this to verify that. Well, uh, I put my camera in like the worst spot probably. So whenever you tape something, tape threads like this, see all that resistance was a lot harder to pull, but it didn't actually lock. And now I'm pretty sure it's locked. Like it's actually taut. Yeah. Okay. So I feel good about that. I'm gonna go verify upstairs just one more time, make sure I feel good about everything. Then I'll come down, turn the gas on. Last time I had issues up top, so I'm gonna start spraying up there and then I'll, well, fuck it. I'll just start spraying down here probably. So, you know, we got propane tanks outside. That's coming in through this line. It tees off here to go up to a heater in the bathroom. And this is the line going to the range. This, whenever you see a valve with the switch pointed perpendicular to the line, that's like the off position on is, is gonna be like in line with the line. So that's an easy way to tell us is off. Once I turn it on, that's propane shooting through here and up wherever it can get to. There's something in the oven, I, I hope, that stops it from coming unless you tell it to through the oven, but it shouldn't be coming out any of those connections I just made. So all I'm gonna turn this on, I'll quickly spray this, take a quick peek, make sure there's no major leaks, and I'm gonna just run upstairs and check that because there was a huge leak last time, so I, I wanna turn it off quick if that's the case. Yeah, if it looks good, then I'll come back down here and finish up. Also, last time I could hear, I could hear the leak upstairs. Yeah, I was doing a whole different thing and like, it makes sense to me why it was that way. I know it won't happen again, at least for the same reason, but anyways, here we go. Okay, not that noise. Okay, so preliminary look was good. Okay, so upstairs it's looking good. I also can't smell anything. The reason that you make this soapy water mix is because the soap in the water you know, produces bubbles really easily. So anywhere that, you know, air, or in this case propane would be leaking out, would be, you know, creating bubbles basically. So obviously the water is gonna move because it's water, but I mean, it's exactly what it would sound like. So there, there's, there's absolutely no sign of any of that happening. So that's how you check a connection and make sure it's secure. Uh, and that's how you search for a link uh, a lot of the times when you when you have a leak and you don't know where it is. You know, when you get your gas guy in, he'll he'll also have a bottle of bubbly water. And uh, me and him, totally the same thing. Just trust me, bro. That's a joke. Wow, so awesome. Well, I really think it's gonna work. I really think this is it. Obviously, my work will be publicized. And uh, the fact that I'm not actually the gas man might expose some shortcomings in what I've done here. I hope nothing too critical. So far, no leaks. The only thing is like, I can check it while it's out, but like I can't get a spray bottle back there to check now that I've pushed it back in place. So obviously that shouldn't have done anything. I made sure to do it gently and feed the line from the other side stuff, but it is what it is. So hopefully that's all good. Let's see if one of these burners wants to turn on. I think actually that's because I have to let the air out. Because all the lines are full of air. Yeah, okay, sweet. So I could probably change the settings here whenever I feel like fucking with it. Because that's on the lowest and it doesn't really get noticeably bigger till about there. So you can change the settings on these things to be like a little more sensitive to your needs, basically. Well, shit, I never thought this would end. Well, I mean, that's a good sign. I was kind of curious about what would happen if I put all the burners on high because I was a little uncertain about so the gas line sizing and stuff like that. I'd say that's pretty fucking good. I mean, if it can keep all burners on at the same time, we should be in business, right? This does look a little low, but it was like that before I turned these on and those are obviously eating a lot of propane. So I'm feeling good. I, I don't have the oven on, but how many times am I gonna have five burners in the oven on? Literally never. See, so just for your peace of mind, I'll show you turning these off. 
because I also would feel a little tweaked just seeing five burners in the brand new range left on. I'm like, see y'all, time to play Pokemon. Another day, another cheeky nugget salad sleigh. I'm having the jackfruit nuggets, the buffalo ones, on top of a little salad. I got my Meredith Dairy Sheep and Goat, you already know. And then I use some of the olive oil from that, just as like a dressing. And I haven't cut up the nuggets, but normally I cut them up. Also, I got a double nugget. That's always fun. Okay, I've been editing it up over here for a while, and I totally scarfed down my salad. But I also just packed these four ornaments for our grandparents who are going to become great grandparents. And I meant to send these off a couple of days ago. But today when I was out and I stopped by the post office, I just grabbed these little boxes. They're just the priority mailers and the small box size is what I put them in. And I used a bunch of the packing paper from over there. <laughs> My little hair towels drying over there. I just, you know, packed them a bunch in there. And I'm gonna send them off tomorrow along with my brother's Christmas present probably as well. All right, day 12. Let's see what it is, Starleon. Ooh, dark chocolate. Delicious. Do a horrible angle today. Bon appetit. Mm. Okay, Pokemon. Let's see what you got today. Today is number 12. Ah, always bite me. It's peeking out. Come here. Yes. Got him. Wow, it's another Pikachu and it's literally like totally pointing. Let's check this out. Today? Yesterday? Wow, might I even say yesterday was cooler. What do you think? I'm having a good bang day today. <laughs> I have finished editing up until this point of the vlog and I just need to wrap it up in a pretty package for you because I have an endocrinologist appointment early in the morning, like first thing tomorrow. So I'm gonna have to wake up for that. And I'm excited to finally be going to the endocrinologist, but also I'm like, I need to hit the friggin' hay. But since I forgot to say it earlier, thank you for all of the love on the sex reveal of our baby. We love our baby girl. And honestly, I told Finley this earlier, but like not to be rude to you guys. I mean, some of y'all have been rude to me, so <laughs> I'm fine saying it, but I'm just so excited to not have to like do announcements anymore. I know it's like very exciting to share and I don't want that to come off as fucked up, but like just putting up announcement videos, people are so judgmental and it's so weird. Like if you're judging somebody else's reaction to finding out big news in their life, you're weird, you know? <laughs> and also like, if you hate me, don't watch me. Or if you hate my husband, like don't watch him. My sister had a whole vent sesh about this in one of her Vlogmas episodes, but just like, you literally are paying me to watch me, you know? And it's like, why would you continue to do that for somebody who riles you up? Obviously, like 99% of the comments on any announcement that I make are positive and happy and happy for us, you know, and just cute and great. But also just like, I get weird comments sometimes and I'm like, why did you feel the need to share this with me? Like, we are both so happy about this news and we're not like over the top people who are gonna like scream and cry. I mean, I cried in the announcement video, but like Finley doesn't have to be like that, you know? And I don't have to like explain that to you that his reaction is justified. It's so weird. People are just so weird. And even in the video that we filmed the day that we like announced to everybody that we were having a baby, I tried to incorporate into that vlog kind Kind of a similar but much nicer clip than this one being like we're pretty low-key chill people you know like we have simple life and we have simple reactions and announcements and just you know we don't dramatize or fake anything that we put online for you and i think that that's completely justified and normal to not have some kind of like a oh my god like before i film those clips i'm never to finley like and really play it up for the camera honey you know what i mean like get a fucking grip guys seriously if you want fake content don't watch me <laughs> honestly <laughs> this also just feels like more pressing to tell you now because like you know we haven't shared what we're gonna do when we actually have the baby but like if y'all are acting like this honey i don't know <laughs> the internet is such a weird place but it's also a loving place and it's a place i've been for 11 years of my life growing and shaping and changing and you know marrying the love of my life and now having a baby with him and it's just yeah it's a lot of different phases to share with you so i guess just my main point is that i love you and every video that i make you just have to keep in mind like 
I film them with love and respect for you and sharing things with you because I love you as people and I want to like go through phases of life with you. And if you really think about it, I don't have to do that. <laughs> like, I literally could have never shared any of this information with you guys or had like a surprise baby and just been like, haha, you know, I've been hiding this, like hid my bump for nine months. I don't know how I would do that, but I think people really get lost in translation that it's an honor and a privilege to be witness to somebody's birth and their journey of pregnancy. And I think, yeah, people just really take that for granted and the parasocial relationship of it all, you know, just gets people's heads all jumbled and they feel justified in just sharing really weird <laughs> opinions. Even when people have been commenting like, I love our baby, I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know, I have so many conversations about these topics with friends, just like the boundary, I guess, of sharing my life online and like knowing what point of that to cross and not and to keep sacred and secret with me and my partner compared to sharing it with you. It's just all a learning journey for all of us, you know? And even at the end of yesterday's video, when I was like talking about the gender reveal, I was like, this is a weird thing to share on the internet. Like, let's share the sex of our baby. You know what I mean? Like that is hypothetically, like if an alien saw yesterday's video, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? So it is like kind of trippy to me to have a video like that go up and then be like, wow, this is so strange. And then people feel like entitled to a certain kind of reaction or whatever, when inherently I know that this is a weird thing to share. And like my brain just can't even like fathom all of that at once. I don't know, all I was trying to say is like, you know, we wanted to know that information and then the information is one of those things where it's just like standard on the internet with people to generally share that. Not always, and I'm not saying you have to, but we were like, oh, it would be cute to like involve the pigs and do that together. So let's do it and film it. We didn't have like some big party. It was chill and our reactions are what they are. Like we're so fucking happy we're having a little baby girl. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. And that's enough of my speech. I'll talk to you guys in the morning. You can support me on Patreon if you so please and I'll just see you tomorrow. Stay smiling, bye y'all.